It's been 18 years since the last Matrix movie came out, but the mind-bending story, not over yet. The Matrix Resurrections, the fourth film in the series, will be released in theaters and on HBO Max on December 22nd. Fan favorites like Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss reprise their roles from the previous films. We'll also see some new faces, including Jessica Henwick as Bugs. ABC's Will Reeve sat down with Henwick about her role and what it's like joining the Matrix universe. Where are we? Tokyo. A moving portal makes it harder to track us. Congratulations, first off, on joining the, the Matrix universe. But you had a choice to make because you could either audition for Matrix Resurrections or Shang-Chi, and you chose the Matrix. You called it your red pill, blue pill moment. What was that all about? Yeah, I made two stealth tapes, one for Shang-Chi and one for the Matrix, and they both came back at the exact same time, and they both wanted me to fly to LA to screen test. But they knew about the other offers, and so they put exclusivity clauses in that they would only fly me if I agreed to only audition for them. And I knew that I had no confirmation that I would get either role, so if I chose wrong, I would lose out on both. Uh, but it's pretty simple, you know, the Matrix was very forthcoming and gave me a script, and Marvel is notoriously secret. I I've had a great working relationship with them, and I, I love working them. I hope I will again, but this was just a, yeah, a kind of straightforward decision for me. Now, your character in this film, Bugs, is like one of us. She's a fan of The Matrix. She's a fan of Neo, of course, played by Keanu Reeves. Were you a Matrix fan before you got indoctrinated into this world? Yes, I was a, Matri I was a Matrix fan, and I was a fan of Neo. And now Bugs is new. How do you introduce a new character into this world, and how does your character reflect a more contemporary view on things? Well, I mean, it was kind of easy for me to approach Bugs because she is the audience's eyes in. Like you said, she's a fan of the legend of Neo. She's a fan of the legend of the Matrix. So I think it's really easy to, to empathize with her. But. Yeah, she opens the film and leads us down the rabbit hole and leads Neo back to the truth. When you lie awake at night before this movie premieres, what do you think will be going through your head? <laughs> I, I hope that I will be at peace and, and sleep easy, but you know, there's a lot of pressure on a film like this because it, it means so much to so many people, and to me as well. I, I love the original. So I'll probably be worrying, honestly. I'll probably have a sleepless night wondering if I did a good enough job. What sort of responsibility did you feel entering the Matrix here and becoming a part of it? I, I mean, it's like, like I said, it's just, it's, there, there's such a huge fandom out there for it. But I, I kind of reckoned with it by, well, when I read the script, I, I knew it was a completely different beast. It's tonally different. Lana's filmmaking style has changed. It is its own thing. Uh, we knew going into it that the original film is so perfect, there's no reason to remake that. You know, it shouldn't be touched. So it, it had to be something different. Fun, hard, scary, confusing, or something else. What best describes making this film? Fun and hard. We shot for 11 months. It was meant to be four months, but because of the COVID shutdown, uh, we all went home. We stopped halfway through, and Lana said, yeah, maybe that'll be it. Maybe we won't come back. She, she wasn't sure she wanted to come back. She said, maybe this will be the legend of Matrix 4, and it will be this unfinished film that no one will ever see, and maybe that's what we're destined to be a part of. And uh, I, I had just shaved my head for the film, so I wasn't real keen on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was emotion obviously it's an emotionally volatile time. We got through it. It was just, it was really hard. When you see the end result of all your cast and crew's hard work over nearly a year of filming, what did that feel like and how did the experience resonate with you? I was very nervous going into it because I think I, I, I blanked out a lot of what happened. <laughs> And so I couldn't remember it. I was like, did I do a good job? Did I do a good job? And uh, I was nervous going into it and then exultant at the end. I, I was really happy. How do you expect Matrix fans to react to this new installment? I think they will love how meta it is. I think they will love all the big topics because they're more relevant now than they were when the film first came out, I think. 
I think they'll be surprised by the the changes, though. It's you know, it's got a sense of humor. The original it has a, a darkness to it. That the new one is more focused on light and hope and uh, the idea that love transcends time and space. There's a brightness to the new one. Where could the Matrix story go from here? You have to ask Lana that. Only she knows. It's all locked in her head. She won't tell us anything. <laughs> well, thank you for telling me what you know. I appreciate it, and best of luck on this crazy journey. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.